Anna Maria van Sherman, was born in Cologne to a Dutch Protestant family. Gifted from a young age, she mastered Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and even Arabic. Her intellect attracted the attention of leading thinkers, and she became the first woman allowed to attend university lectures in the Dutch Republic from behind a curtain. She was not only a scholar and poet, but also a painter, theologian, calligrapher, and engraver. Van Sherman corresponded with Descartes, Boyle, Pierre Gassendi, and Princess Elizabeth of Bohemia. In her treatise on the education of women, she claimed that women's minds were just as perfect as men's. The greatest ignorance is to believe a woman incapable of wisdom, she wrote. Later, she joined the mystical Labadist movement, but retained her scholarly reputation and remained an icon of early feminism. Charles VI was born in Vienna as the second son of Emperor Leopold I. Originally not expected to rule, he became heir after his brother Joseph I died without a male successor. Raised in the Habsburg tradition, Charles was deeply influenced by Spanish culture due to his earlier claim to the Spanish throne. Charles VI is remembered not for military triumphs, but for his efforts to preserve the empire's unity. He issued the pragmatic sanction to ensure his daughter Maria Theresa's succession, sparking opposition from European powers. His reign faced economic strain, yet the court remained splendid. I rule not for glory, but for order, he said. Charles was a passionate collector, a patron of the arts, and left a complex but lasting legacy. Louise Marie of Bourbon II Sicilies was born in Naples into the royal house of Bourbon II Sicilies. A granddaughter of Ferdinand I, she received a strict Catholic upbringing and was raised amid the ceremonies of Neapolitan court life. Her marriage to Ferdinand of Austria Est brought her to Mogna, where she became Duchess Consort. In Mogna, Louise Marie became a symbol of virtue and devotion. Her piety, charity, and modesty earned admiration. She endured exile during the revolutions and stood loyally beside her husband. It is not power that adorns a woman, but her faith and courage, contemporaries said with the Duchess. Despite personal hardships, she remained true to her duty, leaving behind the image of an ideal Catholic princess in an age of turmoil. Jakob Prantauer was born in Stans, Tyrol, into a modest artisan family. Trained as a stonemason, he later studied architecture, where his talent quickly became evident. He moved to Austria, where his career blossomed through commissions from monasteries seeking grandeur in stone and spirit. Prantauer became a key figure of Austrian Baroque. His greatest masterpiece, Melk Abbey, stands as a symbol of the union between architecture, faith, and power. He didn't just design buildings. He created spiritual landscapes that inspired awe and elevation. In stone, one can pray no less than in words, a contemporary wrote of his work. Prantauer laid the foundations of an architectural school that shaped a generation, including his nephew, Joseph Mungen. Zinga of Ndongo and Matoma was born into the royal family of the Mbundu people in what is now Angola. Trained in diplomacy and warfare from a young age, she stood out for her intellect and strength. Zinga rose to power in a time of crisis, when her kingdom was under threat from Portuguese colonial forces. Zinga became famous as a strategist and resolute leader who defended her lands and manipulated rivalries between European powers. She waged wars, formed alliances, adopted Christianity for diplomacy, and abandoned it when it lost its value. I was born not to serve, but to rule, she said. Her reign lasted nearly half a century, leaving behind a legend of a woman who defied empires. Morris of Orange was born in Dillenburg 
into the powerful house of Nassau. The son of William the Silent, he received a military and humanist education in Leiden. From an early age, he was groomed to continue the Dutch struggle for independence from Spain. Morris of Orange became a brilliant commander and military theorist. He reformed the Dutch army through discipline, fortification, and soldier training. His victories over the Spanish gave the Republic a much needed respite. Politically, he was severe his conflict with Johan van Oldenbarnevelt ended in the latter's execution. War needs not loud words, but precise calculation, he said, leaving behind a new model army and a transformed view of authority. Princess Charlotte of Wales was the only child of George, Prince of Wales, and Caroline of Brunswick. Born into the troubled Hanoverian dynasty, she was raised amid royal scandal, but became a beacon of hope for the British monarchy. Her independent spirit and popularity with the public set her apart. Charlotte became the darling of the people. The English rose with a strong sense of duty and a warm nature. She rejected a political match and chose Prince Leopold of Saxe-Coburg for love. Their marriage symbolized a fresh start for the monarchy. But her sudden death in childbirth shook the nation. Not just a princess, but the future she carried was lost. I am afraid, but happy, she whispered before the end. Her passing plunged London into mourning and sparked a race for heirs, which led to the birth of Queen Victoria. Louis XVI was born into the French Bourbon dynasty and received a thorough but conservative education. At 20, he ascended the throne in 1774, shy and well-meaning, but ill-prepared for the mounting crisis. In 1775, he was crowned at Reims with great ceremony, yet the storm of revolution was already gathering. At his coronation, Louis was full of good intentions, but had little grasp of how to rule a nation burdened by debt and hunger. He abolished torture and encouraged science, but hesitated before real reform. His marriage to Marie Antoinette symbolized the monarchy's disconnect. Even in these early years, unrest was stirring, and his indecision would prove fatal. I fear doing harm in pursuit of good, he confessed. Fourteen years later, revolution would erupt, and the crown would become a sentence.